In this tutorial I'll show you how to wrap Saber around objects. Let's get into it. So the thing about Saber is that it's not a 3D effect, so we cannot actually wrap this around our hand here if we wanted to, and even if we create masks around it, it wouldn't look too good. So here's a trick that you can use to make this effect possible. To start off with this clip, I'm gonna go ahead and track it and also rotoscope our hand. In order to track this shot, I'll be using Mocha. Let's go into Mocha here. And if you open it up and it looks different for you, then go into workspace here and change it to classic. And I'll select my pen tool and just create a rough mask around the arm here. Keep enough distance and this should be all right. And if you go down here, you have a bunch of options you can track. I'm going to unselect shear and you can keep the scale if you need to, but in my shot, I don't really need any scale. So I will unselect it for now and track forward. All right, a pretty simple track. Let's go ahead and control S to save this and exit out. I'll create a new null object and go into Mocha here, tracking data, create track data. Make sure I select the mask I created, hit OK, change the export option to transform. And on my layer export, I'll select the null object. Apply it and now the tracking data is on this null. Next, let me go ahead and quickly rotoscope the arm. We can go ahead and hide the mocha effect since we don't need it anymore. And I'll select the roller brush, double click the layer and create a mask around it. All right, once you're happy with the mask, you can go ahead and click on freeze here to freeze the roller brush. All right, we tracked it, rotoscoped it. Now let's just duplicate this layer here. I'll name the bottom one background and remove the roller effect and the mocha effect. And on this one, I'll just name it hand now let's create the actual saber effect. Let's create a new composition and you wanna keep the height of your composition the same as the one you're working with, but extend the width. So let's say I will go for 2000 here. You might wanna set yours to 3000 if you're working at at least 1080p and create a new solid and call it saber and add saber to it. Let's hide the effect for now and I'm gonna create a mask here, starting from here all the way here. Enable Saber back and change my core type to Layer Mask. I'll make the core size 1 and disable the glow. Let me hide the mask here. I'm gonna go ahead into my distortion here and under core distortion set the amount to 5 and just to give it some sort of animation. Next let's go into the render settings here and just make sure that the comp settings are set to transparent and we are ready to animate this. So let's just create two keyframes here. On my end offset, I will set this to zero. And right before here, I'll set it to 100. Just a simple animation of a stroke. Cool. Now I will go ahead and duplicate this layer. Let's hit U to bring up the keyframes and just drag this layer to start of this keyframe. And on my second layer, let me enable back the mask. I'll just drag the mask on top like so. And I'm just gonna create a few copies of these until I fill up my comp. All right, so this is what you wanna end up with. Now I'll go to my first layer and on my starting size, I'll set it to zero. And on my last layer, I will set the end size to zero. It's just to have the starting and ending point smaller. Uh, lastly, I'm just gonna add a color here. So let's add a fill and we'll make this light bluish kind of color here. And just copy this to all these layers. Let's go back to our main comp and we'll drag the comp we just created and let's add the main effect, which is CC cylinder. Now this effect basically creates a 3D cylinder and the saber layer we created is wrapping around it. And this effect is actually 3D. So we do have a 3D object and the texture is just wrapping around it. So if we zoom in here, you can see there's an issue with the two layers not connecting. So if we go back to our comp here and we move the mask just a bit here, you can see it's starting to align and you wanna do this for the rest here, just in case you're experiencing this as well. All right, let's go to our cylinder effect and we can start decreasing the radius here. And let's go here. And I might actually make this faster, so I'll stretch it to 80%. And let's start aligning it to our hand. So we can rotate the Z position and the X here to sort of match the hand. So once we position the layer, we can go ahead and parent it to the null object and now it's track. Now the issue here is that it's overlapping on the hand. So the cool thing about this effect is we can go into the render here and set it to be on the outside. And if we duplicate this 
and set the second layer to inside and drop it under our hand is basically wrapping around it. So if we play this back, you can see the effect is going around our hand. And it's not perfect at the beginning here, but we can go ahead and fix this later on. But nonetheless, it's wrapping around our hand and making this effect possible. Now, I'm gonna delete this one for now. Let me just name this outside. And let's start adding some effects to this. So I'll go ahead and make this maybe even faster. So 60. And we don't want this to be too uniform. So we can go ahead and add a liquify effect. Go into the tool options here. And I'm gonna make the brush size a bit bigger. Select my very first tool. And just shrink down the effect here. To start off smaller. And sort of scale up towards the camera. All right, so this is the before and after. So that just gives it a nice touch to make it less of a uniform effect. Next, let's go ahead and add a glow. So I'll be using deep glow for this and adjust some of the settings and set the layer to additive. Now let's make sure this is set to outside and duplicate it, we'll name this inside and set the render to inside. Drop it below our hand and there we go. Now, one more thing you can add to sell the effect better here is duplicate the outside layer and the hand rotoscope layer. And let's just isolate these. I'll name this one mask and this one will be glow. So you wanna mat your glow onto the mask. So basically we're matting it inside our hand. Now, if I add a fast blur here, sort of just spread towards the hand here and maybe up our exposure. I will also add a fast blur on our mask just to soften the edges here and drop this under our outside layer. So this is just to give it the sort of illumination from the effect onto our hand. And this is how you can create a saber effect around an object. Now you might have seen me adding some lightning effects at the beginning here. So I did this by dragging this lightning stock footage I've got from Action VFX, which is actually free. So you can go ahead and get this. And I did the same thing as we did with our glow. So I selected our mask here, I positioned it, set it to additive, give it some color, and we can also align this to our tracking. But yeah, I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.